Welcome to another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, coming to you six days a week as we interview whitetail experts and hear their traditions and personal stories of the hunt. Learn more about the latest gear, discover proven tips, and the latest strategies so you can make your next hunt a success. Now, here's your host, Bruce Hutchin. Whitetail Rendezvous is pleased to announce a partnership with GoHunt.com. Who's GoHunt.com? Well, if you're a DIY hunter, you need the information at GoHunt.com forward slash insider. Why? Because it provides 4,200 profiles, every unit, every species, and every season. Furthermore, they give in-depth analysis, interactive maps, unit access, and seasonal trends. Draw odds are very important, and they give you the most accurate information in the business. All this is available when you go to GoHunt.com forward slash insider. Make sure you use promo code WR when you join Insider. You'll get a $50 gift card for GoHunt.com gear shop. Remember, when you become a member of GoHunt.com forward slash Insider, you're going to get a $50 gift card to GoHunt gear shop. What's in the gear shop? The best gear that you can buy for hunting the West. All in all, if you're hunting out West in 2018, GoHunt.com Insider is where you need to be to get all the research information. When you use promo code WR, Whitetail Rendezvous receives a small commission from GoHunt.com. Welcome for the final segment of uh, Land Management, Land and Legacy, presented by Whitetail Rendezvous. And I'm here with the uh, one of the owners, uh, Matt Dye. He and Adam Keith own Land and Legacy. And we're going to talk about the plan. The first part, first segment, if you haven't listened to it, listen to it at whitetailrendezvous.com. And the second part with Boots on the Ground, listen to that. Now we're going to wrap it up with Matt, um, the plan. So you've done all this work. You've been on the ground. Um, now what happens? This is this is where we get down to the nitty gritty, Bruce. This is where um, really our recommendations become written form. Um, and as we've talked in the past, Bruce, when we got started um, with Land and Legacy, we wanted something, our product to live on and influence people. We want to share information that's going to change people's, honestly, lives and change properties because there's such a draw to, to land and to people. People want to be a part of it. It's so natural. It's so raw. It's so real. So our product our plans that we produce for people, they have to have that same importance and that same intensity and that same knowledge shared. So, and honestly, it goes back to our name, Land and Legacy. There's a legacy that needs to carry on with each ownership of a property. You know, property changes faces. It, it wears different hats through over, over time and different years. But what one, one question we like to always ask is, if you were to walk away from your property right now, what would change? What would the next landowner say about it? What would the next landowner um, say about you as the previous landowner? Would they be happy that you owned it? Would they be sad that you owned it? Would they, um, you know, what what would their thoughts be about you as a as a landowner? And that could be your kids. That could again be a, di- a completely different guy from out of state. But what have you done? to the land that we live on, that we our resources are built upon, what have you done to conserve, to enhance, to protect, to improve? What have you done to influence that positively? Or have you influenced it negatively? What do you need, what changes do you need to make in your in your management of that property on the time that you own it? I, I we take it, we take it seriously, I guess is what I want to say. Um, and what I want to convey, and I hope everyone else does who has property in their name um, or in a, in a trust, whatever it may be, that's a resource and that's a huge importance to um, us. You, you think about like the American dream, you know, it's to, it's to have freedom and own land and have the ability to dictate what happens on your own property. That's huge. Um, so that's where the importance of a plan comes together because there's a legacy that we need to carry on with this plan. There's there's importance down the road that we need to keep in mind. So 
we we don't want we want to share information with everyone. So we don't have just one option for for a potential landowner um, to to buy into. Basically, um, we have three different options, and I don't I don't know honestly um, if that is a common thing um, for land consultants, but for us, that's exactly the way we feel that um, we need to be at and and offer services because everyone's different and, and they're, um, I guess, if you will, the steps in which they classify themselves as a landowner, as a habitat manager, the, the knowledge that they have, the knowledge that they want to gain. Um, so wherever they're at in that, that walk, um, we have a plan that can set up and provide them with the information that they need. So first off, after we've done all the boots on the ground, um, we, we, we have the three plans for them to basically choose. The one is a is a walking tour. Um, this walking tour is is pretty simple. It's exactly what it sounds like. We don't have a fancy name for it, but we come to the property. We walk it with you. We spend as much time with you on that property as you need, and basically, it's on your shoulders to take notes, um, to get the information that we talk about in the field to you for you to implement. So whether it's another guy that you have, maybe it's your brother who owns the property with you. He's there taking notes as we're touring around the property. And then we sit down once we're done over a map with you and simply annotate a, a hard copy map of that property. And we find that this, this management um, plan um, is best for people who are just kind of getting started entry level. Um, they have it 100% um, gotten into their Bruce, are you with me? Yep. Okay. I my screen changed and I got a little worried there. Somebody um, probably just called in. Oh gotcha. So as long as you're there, I am yep. there too. Okay. So that plan, there we go. That plan is is for the person who who um has got a note taker with them or they can take notes on the way. Um or they're just getting started into this property management and they kind of want a taste or it's a smaller property. And um, they may not have the, let's just say, the resources to be able to pay for a full plan. Um, so this is going to get them started. This will get uh, you know them actively working their property. Um, or it's actually a client who's hired us before, and they have multiple properties, and they want um, a full plan on this property, a full plan on that property. But this one, they're okay with just a walking tour because they're going to get a lot of um, the information from a full plan that they can kind of correlate and use on this property. So again, no matter where you're at on the spectrum, this plan could fit your needs. Um, secondly, we have a hybrid consultation. This consultation um, is honestly probably one of the more popular consultations that we do <clears throat> because through our podcast and through other resources that are out there, um, those people who listen to the podcast have existing knowledge of habitat management. Um, there are ones out there who are actively um, working their property and, and doing that sort of thing. So when they hire us, um, this hybrid plan is simply, in, in layman's terms, the Cliff Notes version of our full plan. So if we get to a property um, and they've, they've requested a hybrid plan, then Land Legacy is going to produce for them five to seven pages of basically the, the how and the what for them to basically implement their property on their property. And then we create a custom map for them. Um, and now we've, we've gotten to the point where um, we've been able to team up with Huntera and our recommendations that we make on our custom maps can then be overlaid on their really high quality maps and printable version of the map. And the customer will get a um, Huntera map with our recommendations on it. That's kind of a, a neat feature of that plan. But for that hybrid plan, if you're doing great techniques for, um, you know, improving soil health, I'm not going to touch on soil health in that plan because I got the thumbs up. I gave you the thumbs up in the field. Keep on doing what you're doing. However, if you're, um, let's say, let's say you've got like a, a cool season fescue grass or a smooth brown grass um, that's um, spread throughout the property and it's interfering with the, the, the possibility of native plants. Um, growing, I'm going to make the recommendation to you in this hybrid plan. Hey, control your cool season native grasses. Here's how to do it. Here's when to do it. 
and here's what to do. And your result is going to be this. <clears throat> and so it's a very clean, short, to the point section on exactly what you need to do, whether it's sanctuary placement or, or establishment, whether it's a um, even even down to the point of, hey, your trail cameras are in places where they they shouldn't be. You're interfering with um, the natural flow. You're, you're leaving. You're disturbing too much of an area. I'm going to put that into a hybrid plan. Um, a big one is timber management. Here are the steps that you should take to improve your timber. Here are bedding area thickets that you need to implement on your property. Here's how you do it. Here's where you do it. And here's when you do it. And then um, it could be prescribed fire or it could be invasive species management. You know, those that's a huge topic now. People are starting to see the and get aware of invasive species on their, their property. So we're going to point those out in the field. And then we're going to tell you in the plan, the hybrid plan, that Cliff Notes version, hey, you have this on the property. <clears throat> Here's how you control it. Here's when you control it. Make sure you get out there and do it. Um, so that's the hybrid plan. Again, that comes with the custom map. Um, usually it's two or three maps. It's a hunting map. It's a management map. And it's a burn unit map. And then you have the option of that hunt terror map as well. Then we step up into um, the land and legacy full management plan. And that is the, the Cadillac version of information and knowledge for your specific property. <clears throat> we write 20 to 25 pages um, of property specific notes of, of topics, of um, areas that you need to work on. Those can be anywhere from soil improvement, um, food resources, native food resources, timber management, sanctuary development, water resources, trail camera, placement or uh, management, um, anywhere from invasive species control, prescribed fire, I didn't mention that one already, um, uh, predator control. We're going to hit on all those topics and how each one of those needs to be implemented or it's already implemented, but guides you through the how, the what, the when, the where, the why. All, all of that explained for one of those sections specifically for your property. So there's no question as to what to do, when to do it, how to do it. It's there in that plan. It can always go back and refer to in this plan. And <clears throat> this is a, pr a plan that honestly lives through um, that property. And once we get that habitat, once we make those recommendations to get a ha the habitat into a specific level or, 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 if you will, habitat type, then you get into, you graduate into a management phase. And then in that plan too, we tell you how to manage that habitat once you get it to that desired um, height. Um, so there's not only the steps to take to get it where it needs to be, and then then there's the steps to maintain it at where it's at. So really this property isn't just, you know, hey, <clears throat> here's for the next three years, you do what you need to do. This plan is, hey, you, the, lot, the, the entire time you own this property, these are the steps that you should take to um, manage and get the most out of your property and its resources. That's the that's the full management plan. Of course, we've got our custom maps, four to five maps that we create specifically for the property. <clears throat> and then the option of that hunt terror map as well um, with our recommendations. And I, I hope that everyone can understand, again, the importance of the legacy that can be left. Whether, I guess I guess it is left no matter what. Um, whether you are thinking about it or you're not thinking about it, the next person who takes ownership of a property is going to think back on what you've done or what you haven't done to the place. So there is a certain legacy that, that's left, whether it's good or bad, or whether you think about it or not, it is left behind because um, you're at one point were tied to a property. So <clears throat> that's why we take these plans seriously um, and, and try and offer something to everyone, no matter where they're at in the spectrum of land management. Um, there's options for you. And I hope that we've been able to convey the importance of the right legacy to be left with land and the right management practices and why overall land management is as important as I'm talking about it. I mean, Bruce, you, you understand the importance. You want to do a whole series of podcasts on land management. And this is this is weighty. This is something that um, if, a, if a landowner's got kids, he wants to pass it down in the right form 
in the right manner uh, and make that land as productive as possible. I, we get those emails weekly. Hey, love what you guys are doing. I've got kids and, and you guys are helping me to make my land the best that it can be. So when I'm when I'm dead and gone, well, that's not a, necessarily a sad thing, but when I'm dead and gone, I know that this resource is offered to my kids in the best state that it can be. Um, I, I think if, if I guess if every parent, let's look, compare it to something else, if every, if every parent was was honest with themselves, that they'd say, hey, I don't want to leave my kids with a bunch of debt from my life. Well, if you're a landowner, you should offer the same thing and say, hey, I don't want to leave my kids with with a property that's just kind of in shambles and, and not in not up kept. And they're, what's the, what's their honestly um, what's their likely action if it is? Probably just to sell it and move on, just take the money and run. But if it's a resource, is if it's alive, if it's if it's productive, if it if it can be managed, if it's got resources that they want to introduce their kids to or or hang on to, they're likely going to keep that going, um, you know, through their lifetime too, and and not just put it up for sale once once you're gone. But you know, it's important to understand that and understand the value of land ownership. Um, and know, I guess, what's at stake with it, and I guess um, the responsibility that comes along with it. So that's that's our plans. That's what we offer with Land and Legacy. And, you know, I think that's why we stand out among consultants is that the, the influence, the factors of why we make the rec- recommendations we do, the services that we offer, and hopefully can convey <clears throat> the importance of the legacy and and the responsibility that comes along with land ownership. Thanks for that. And uh, listeners, one thing that I've learned through my journey here in Whitetail Rendezvous is there's a lot of ways um, to make your land better. And the thing I've learned and heard very loud and clear, you know, people ask me because I live out west, uh, hey, you know, what do you think about this basin? And when I'm thinking about coming out to Colorado and I'm thinking about this and, and what do you think about you know, X, Y, and Z. And if one, if I haven't been on the ground, I can't tell you anything because you know, and I know about as much as anything, we can read the same maps. But it, with whitetail hunting, it, it's more than that. And it, growing up, uh, going to college, marrying a gal from Wisconsin and, and being on the same farm for, you know, like I said, 52 years, that's a heck of a legacy. And I've been invited by the people that own the farm. We're in the second generation now. And I've seen the changes in the farm, and and yeah, we kill a lot of deer, we kill small deer, big deer, uh, we kill a lot of deer, but it's a family affair. And so, uh, where I'm going with this is just don't get on the social media and 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 say, hey, can you look at this Google Earth and and tell me, you know, where I should, ha- you know, have here's where my stands are, and where sh- where should I move? Why would you even move? You know, we got stands named as everybody does, and but the more I I listen, you know, um, to what's happening in the whitetail world. You know, a lot of people have permanent stands, but a lot of people are running and gunning. Okay, where are you going to run and gun to? How are you going to manipulate the land so that run and gun place is, is, is a good place? Or are you going to let the deer figure out that's where you need to be and then you have to go there? And there's so much information, which is great, but it boggles, it boggles the mind that even in run and gunning, one day, you, you know, I mean, honey, or long-range observation to see where that buck's running because you know where the does are, are bedding and then you're going to put your stand up there and you're only going to hunt three days the whole season what what do you mean i'm only going to hunt three three days if you've done it right uh dan johnson nine feet chronicles uh, puts pins us down you know in measurement of john sloan uh, and they talk about you can hunt only three days a year and kill the biggest deer on your on your land period flat out period well if you don't know your land and you're not managing land, you'll never get to that place. That I'll I'll submit that. Can you luck in on on public land? You sure as heck can. I, but I, on your own land, I think if if you're managing your property, Bruce, I know that's a good point. If you're managing your property, you know it inside and out, and you know how deer are utilizing that property um, through every portion of that season. <clears throat> and you're you're in tune with that. You can observe trail cameras. You can observe from observation stands or whatever it may be but you know how deer use your property, your hunting becomes, one, so much better because you just know it, but two, it's easy to pick stands. And you you sit at home, 
maybe more because you know actually in October that deer's going to do this. He's done it the past two years. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to kill him, and it's going to be it's going to be that simple. But it's a matter of laying out the property and enhancing specific features um, in a manner that's going to allow you to do that and it be consistent. If you have a consistent property, if, if you have consistent cover, if you have consistent food resources, the only thing left for there to be for deer to do is become consistent. And that, that's what that's what creates patterns. That's what creates um, better hunting is consistency. But if you're if you are having habitats that constantly um, changing its security, you're not offering security throughout the property or portions of the property. The deer's not going to consistently bed there. So. I don't know. It's just it's just things that that we need to think of as as hunters. We want to be better hunters. Um, be consistent in what what you're offering on your property, and the deer will res- respond in consistency and patterns that you want to capitalize on. Well, folks, I'm just going to wrap up uh, the plan section. Uh, and again, uh, Matt, how does somebody get in touch with you guys if they want to, you know, follow up and and, and ask some questions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if, if you guys are interested in consultations, questions, habitat, whatever it may be, um, you can email in at info at landandlegacy.tv. Um, <clears throat> or you can find us on Facebook, Land and Legacy, and Instagram at Land and Legacy as well. Um, we'd be happy to help, happy to answer questions, and uh, get you started in the right path. So those are great resources. Don't be afraid to uh, reach out, and we'd be, again, happy to help. Well, Matt, this is fun. I can't wait to get to your partner, Adam Keith, and talk about food plots. But we'll, we'll be getting that scheduled. And, um, folks, thanks for listening. And I hope I, I created more questions than I give you answers. And, and that's one of the things that Whitetail Round, I want people to think about whitetail hunting and how to become better hunters. But even more than that, um, truly keep the hunting tradition alive, whatever that means to you, because it sure as heck means a lot to me and, and Matt. So with that, Matt died, Land and Legacy. Thank you so much for being a participant in land management. You bet. Thank you for your time, Bruce. Hey, folks, a special edition of Whitetail Rounding was coming. I've asked three companies, Land and Legacy, Rackology, and Grandpa Ray Outdoors, to uh, be part of a series on land management and food plots. So uh, the next few episodes, uh, about 18 of them, in fact, are going to be about land, either land management or food plots. Why? Because people have been asking me a lot of questions. So I went out and chatted with some guys and, and Adam, um, Keith and Matt Dye from Land and Legacy. He's joined the crew and, uh, at Rack Allergy, we have Jason Obermiller and Eric Fitzgerald. And rounding out the team is Grandpa Ray Outdoors with John O'Brien. Each of them is going to bring a different flavor in what is land management, what are food plots, why you need them, the pros and cons. So listen up to the next series, and um, I sure hope you, you like them. If you like them, let me know. If you don't like them, let me know what I can do better. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of Whitetail Rendezvous, where you can listen and learn from the experts so you can be more successful on your next hunt. Until next time, listen, learn, and succeed.